Well, that's a big, big uh, tall order. I think her first name to mention is Cambridge. That is Cambridge, England. He was uh, uh, born there. He, uh, his parents were uh, dons. Uh, uh, his father taught at Cambridge University. He then started teaching at Cambridge University, at King's College. So Cambridge was the intellectual um, center of his life. The next big center was uh, his treasury. British government. He started, he worked at the Treasury during the First World War, worked at the Treasury during the Second World War. So British government was his third, uh, sort of third uh, center. And then the Bloomsbury group, which, were, which was the, the group of his friends, he met them at Cambridge. They, can, they were artists, writers, uh, and uh, famous names that uh, everyone's heard of, like Virginia Woolf, um, and this was, this was his group of personal friends. And of course, when he married um, uh, the ballerina Lydia Lopakova, then ballet entered in, into his life. So there was economics, there was a, a government service, and there were the arts. I think those three things contributed to his formation as an economist and as a thinker. I would single out two. First of all, um, markets are not very stable. Uh, they're liable, they're liable to, to crash, uh, especially uh, that's true of investment markets. Um, and secondly, when they, when, when, when they do, and as a result of their crashing economies run down, the governments, governments have a duty to provide a stimulus uh, in order to break the fall and to promote recovery um, because econ the markets won't do that themselves. So I think those are two basic features of Keynesian economics. I think that um, the regulators and governments uh, thought that financial markets were much uh, stabler than they turned out to be, and therefore they could be um, allowed to regulate themselves. So I think um, mo monetary policy or macro policy um, w was, was not attentive to the possibility of uh, these big bubbles building up and then crashing. Uh, and, uh, but the, on the second part, I think the fact that governments came in with a stimulus once the economy had started to run down, was a tribute to Keynes. I think the difference is uh, with the Great Depression itself of the early 30s, when governments did the exact opposite. Um, they, 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 tightened, uh, they tightened their budgets, they, they, they cut their spending, they raised taxes, and as a result made things worse. This time I think they did the opposite, and the reason they did the opposite was Keynes had already written his his theories, his great book, and governments instinctively um, did what he, he, had, he had advised them to. Well, I didn't know that it was consumer choice that is the illuminating thing. What I think, what I think um, uh, his, his theory does enable us to understand is that um, investment is quite uncertain because people don't know what the future is going to bring. They, they, they bet, they bet on the future, and a lot of those bets uh, can go wrong. I think it was also due to the fact that the banking system, or a lot of it, had been deregulated, and, and, and therefore there was very little control over financial innovation, and financial innovation, a lot of it was very, very destructive. So I think, I think Keynes, Keynes's economics illuminates how that, that sort of uh, thing can happen. And also on the other side, I think um, he did insist that when there was a big disturbance, like in the investment market, so it could be in any, in any, in any, in any sort of market, economies don't bounce back quickly on their own. They do aggregate demand, as he called it, or aggregate spending does start falling. And when it falls, unemployment starts rising. So I think that's where his, uh, that's where his economics is, is particularly illuminating in those two areas.
think he always asked the question, what is, what is wealth for? What is money for? It's not something that e economists really ask on the whole. They assume um, that uh, people um, have uh, come to market with, with wants of their own and that, the, that uh, the sole occupation of economics is to show how those wants are most efficiently satisfied. Um, and they will have uh, thought, thought that they were doing a good thing if they set up systems in which, which allowed one satisfaction its fullest play. Keynes always said, no, um, let's, let's, let's look at um, the nature of these wants. And, and we need to always have a, a moral critique of wants. Economics, e economic progress is to enable people to lead a good life. And he didn't think that that was what every, you know, that that was just an individual choice, uh, what a good life is. He was based on, on, on certain traditions of moral philosophy, which said a good life consists of these things. Now, you, can't, you can say, of course, well, that didn't enter into his economics. And many other economists also might have an idea of a good life, which is detached from, from um, what their technical economic work. But I think he tried to keep them connected in his own mind. And I, I think very few economists have followed him in that direction. Well, of course, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't um, have the uh, have the same, uh, uh, you can't have exactly the same remedies for a completely different kind of economy. And things have changed since his day. Uh, and therefore, it's always a slightly artificial discussion to say, well, what would Keynes have done? Um, under the present circumstances. Uh, still, to, to, to carry the, try and carry the point a bit further, I don't think there's been as much change in, 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 the, fina in the financial system as, as one might think. Um, sure enough, Keynes's focus was on, on, the, um, on, on the stock market uh, rather than on the banking uh, system. Um, because at that time, I mean, firms you know, raised money on the whole in, 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 in the raised capital through the stock market and, 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 and the role of bonds and bank borrowing in the financing of business was, was less than, 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 than it is now. Um, but if you read Chapter 12 of the General Theory, you get uh, an, an, an analysis of, of, of herd behavior and um, uh, um, uh, the volatility of psychology of financial markets, which I think can be applied without very much amendment um, to what happened um, in 2007 and 2008. I think he's got the psychology of these markets right. Uh, as for the, uh, I agree with you, of course, there's much less manufacturing done than there was in his day. And that may, uh, may mean that when an economy starts running down, um, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are different factors involved. It may be that, um, in fact, wages are more flexible now because um, in, when you had very heavy manufacturing, you, this, was also the peer, this was also the scene of very powerful unions. But on the other hand, you have a larger public sector than you did in Keynes's day. So I'm not sure that um, wages uh, would be any less sticky today than they were in his day.